G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're going to be talking about some of the young or new players that we could see debut early in season 2024. So it's going to be a mixture of, you know, the draftees, particularly the high draftees, which ones are we going to see early, which ones are we definitely not going to see, and then we can talk about some of the lesser trades or lower profile guys we're expecting to see either debut or play earlier in the season. And what I've done is compiled all my research, my own personal opinion, also canvassing places like Big Footy, see what the fans are saying, and also consulting things like AFL. .com.au, although I will say that I few, found a few things in there that I didn't quite agree with. But either way, let's crack straight into it. So in terms of like high draft picks, these are the players we can absolutely lock in for round one, barring an injury between now and when that happens. So touch wood. But we can expect to see Harley Reid play for West Coast. Riley Sanders is an absolute walk-up start, you'd think, for the Western Bulldogs. He has been so good. It is a strong midfield, but he has been so good that he's got to play round one. Colby McCurchie, you think, is pretty much locked in to play for North Melbourne off a halfback flank. Caleb Windsor and Blake Howes have both already been confirmed to make their debuts this weekend for Melbourne. So Blake Howes was pick 39 a couple of years ago, I think, maybe 2022. And Caleb Windsor was obviously pick seven in the most recent draft. And then there's also Darcy Wilson from St Kilda as a guy who played really well this preseason and has to start round one. So those are the high draft picks. That I think you can pretty much lock and load and some of them have been confirmed. Uh, Zane Dersma, I, I put in the strong chance category. He looked really good against St Kilda. Kicked a couple of goals from memory, but I wouldn't say he's necessarily locked in to the same extent as some of the names I've mentioned there, but pretty safe bet, I would say. There's also Toby Pink, who was a delisted free agent for North Melbourne, so not a hard draft pick as such, but he should play round one, which might be of interest to you if you're, you know, compiling your fantasy teams right now. There's also some doubt over their other defender, Aiden Core. As far as I can tell, he did an ankle injury in December, and it looks like he just hasn't quite come up in time. There's a chance he will play, but there's also a chance he won't, which only strengthens Toby Pink case. So we'll cover the other high draft picks that are still a chance, but first of all, I'm going to rule out the ones we're almost certainly not going to see. So Jed Walter has uh, broken his collarbone. He's going to miss a handful of weeks to start the season at least. Nate Caddy as well is a bit of a question mark. I certainly haven't found it locked in that he's not going to play, but I think he did a back injury at Essendon training, and I think they've just been a little bit tight-lipped as to his recovery. So it seems very unlikely we're going to see Nate Caddy debut in round one. Conor O'Sullivan is another high draft pick that doesn't seem realistic in the frame to, to take a starting key position spot at Geelong in round one. I've also seen it written that GWS are not planning to play Phoenix Goldadder or James Leake in their opening round clash, and that means they're going to start the year in the VFL and try and earn their way into the side. A few other handful of draft picks, you know, this Colton Tholstrup doesn't seem like he's going to play for Melbourne in opening round. It would have been announced by now. And then Gold Coast Academy picks outside of Jed Walter, none of them seem realistic either. So now I'm going to rattle off some players that I think are somewhat a chance to play round one, although certainly less likely, and I'll go through them individually. So there's Adelaide's Daniel Curtin. So after a bit of research, I discovered he's been battling knee soreness for about six weeks now. Didn't play in the preseason game against West Coast. I believe he has played a Sandful trial match. So he's not too far off being fit for selection, but it would be a bit of a gamble to see him round one. So I'd probably bet against that at this stage. Nick Watson, I think is probably more than a 50-52 play, but it's certainly not locked in. He looked decent in his preseason game, although was fairly quiet. I think he had a handful of behinds and 10 touches. Again, you also can just consider the forward line mix of Hawthorne there. And I don't think it's an absolute certainty that we see Nick Watson debut, maybe as the sub, but it's not quite locked in. There's a bit of a buzz about Collingwood's SSP signing Lockie Sullivan, who played well in their first preseason game. But realistically with Collingwood's depth, I don't think it's realistic that he's going to play round one. We've also heard a little bit about Harvey Thomas. He is a GWS Academy pick, I think from last year, but we saw him in the preseason. He had a good game with 14 touches, three clearances, and six tackles, I think, in their second game. Again, a little bit of a smoky rather than a lock-in chance, but he is someone that I've got on my fantasy bench as it currently stands, although that will certainly change. Harvey Gallagher is another one for the Western Bulldogs. I think he's a small forward convert into more of a defender these days. Again, certainly not locked in for round one, but he's around the fringes, and we could see him at least debut early in the season at some point. Cooper Simpson is one for Fremantle that could make his debut early, although I'm not necessarily willing to bet on it at this point. We saw him in flashes play really well in the preseason. He looks like a high-level talent, but I think Fremantle's midfield availability is fairly good. You're going to see Hayden Young move into there. Nat Fife is going to play a bit more time there as well. So we could see Cooper Simpson as a sub or maybe like rotating off a half-forward flank. I'm not exactly sure where that sits. I wouldn't rule it out, but I certainly wouldn't lock it in. Ashton Moore is an intriguing one here, right? Because 
On the AFL website, they've got him in their best 22. And I also saw Fox Footy list him as a genuine bolter to play in their opening round clash. Now, bearing in mind, by the time this video comes out, that game is like two or three days away. So that could be obsolete news by now. But I also think we might have heard a bit by now. And as far as I can tell, what Ashton Moyer didn't feature for them in the preseason. I'm not sure about the first game, but he certainly didn't in the second. And then you go on Big Footy and no one from Carlton thinks that Ashton Moyer is going to play round one. So keep an eye on that one. I've just generally at a loss as to what predict there. But let me know in the comments, Carlton fans, if you have some info on that because I would love to have that question answered. Then we've got a few, a, a bunch at Richmond we could see. One of them's not a AFL debut as such, but Sam Naismith could be on standby if Tommy Nankervis doesn't get up for their opening round clash as a Ruckman. So we could see a new face there. There's another one called Makelti Lafau, who I think is a SSP player signing for them. And I haven't actually seen much of this guy at all. I think he is a 26 year old key position forward. I think he's about 195 centimeters. Rugby convert, but again, his name's getting echoed as a bit of a bolter. I know that he played in one of their games during the preseason and he had five touches in just 23% time on ground. So really hard to extrapolate off that. So could be an absolute smoky. And I've also seen names like Seth Campbell and Steely Green, who both featured in the preseason. I think Seth Campbell started in their second game and Steely Green came on late. So Richmond, I find that very hard to forecast exactly what kind of debutants we're going to see. So keep an eye out for that. So then we can talk about, you know, some of the traded in players for various clubs. I won't cover absolutely all of them, uh, but I'll cover a couple that I don't think will play. As far as as I can tell, Shane McAdam is not in the frame for round one. Now, I feel like I saw that he got injured a few weeks ago, but I haven't been able to find the article anywhere. So forgive my ignorance on that one, but it doesn't seem like we will say Shane McAdam play round one. Demons fans, please clarify that one for me. But Jack Billings does seem like a lock-in. But I'll rattle through, you know, some of the other ones. Lockie Schultz should play round one. Grundy and James Jordan for opening round again should absolutely feature for the Swans. Essendon look like they're going to roll with all four of their recruits. Todd Goldstein with Sam Draper under a little bit of an injury cloud should be an important player for them and we should expect Dersma, Gresham and Makai to all face up. Hawthorne again, it's a, it's a little trickier to pick this one. We said Watson is probably 60-40 if I had to guess as an outsider but in terms of their other recruits you know Gunston, Choll and Ginnivan should all feature and the other one is Massimo D'Ambrosio who I probably didn't have in their best 22 when I would have predicted it during the preseason and yet put his best foot forward this preseason and you know with a few backline injuries there I think D'Ambrosio should feature round one. As for Port Adelaide they'll probably roll with Soldo, Asava and Zerk Thatcher out of their recruits but I'd imagine Jordan Sweet isn't likely to play round one. Zach Fisher and Dylan Stevens should play in the first game for North Melbourne absolutely no doubt about Fisher's form. He was, uh, I think he had 36 touches against St Kilda and Dylan Stevens again. Makes sense. I think he's a best 22 wingman there in addition to some of the other guys I've talked about there. So it could see as many as five new faces for North Melbourne in round one. Riley Bonner has also been a bit of a pleasant surprise for the Saints in addition to Darcy Wilson pretty much locking up a round one spot. Riley Bonner, I think had 30 odd touches. And when you consider there's a number of injuries to St Kilda this off season, I wrote it down somewhere. Yeah, Dougal Howard, Marcus Windhager, Sinclair, Clark, Dow and Butler are all in doubt for round one to different extents. I did see that Windhager Hager was expected to play round one. I don't know if that's still the case. But in addition to Riley Bonner, there's some other guys that have probably put their name in the mix is Ari Schonmaker and Hugo Garcia. Both were later picks in last year's draft, but with the injuries to some of those players, we could see a bit of a surprise debut coming from that batch. For West Coast, Tyler Brockman should feature in round one. However, he did have a bit of a knee complaint during the preseason, didn't feature in either of their games, but seems to be considered best 22, and that seems to be reliant on whether he can get fit in time. Fremantle, you know, they had a number of low-cost pickups. You know, Jeremy Sharp was one of them and Oscar McDonald. Now, I believe there is some doubt over Brennan Cox's availability for round one, which means we could see Oscar McDonald feature as a key position defender after playing the preseason games. And it sounds like Jeremy Sharp has done enough to possibly be in the mix for round one. And then finally, Orazio Fantasia also seems to be a better chance than not to play in round one as a small forward for Carlton. So there you have it, guys. That is me trying to cover off all the debuts we either weren't sure about or wanted some clarification on. That is as much as I have right now. Like I said, there's a few loose ends in there. So fans of those clubs, please clarify for me because I am only one man. But I appreciate you watching this video, guys. I appreciate you supporting the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.